Welcome to a new episode for the Commodity Supercycle today with a special guest, my dear friend Keith Neumeyer from First Majestic Silver. Hi Keith, nice to meet you again. Good seeing you, Mark. Yeah, this time in person, finally here in Frankfurt, it's very cloudy, but hey, we have some topics to discuss. It's also very cloudy on the, on the precious metal market. So everything is going up, Keith, everything except one thing, silver and gold. What's going on? It's a perfect setting out there. We have inflation, we have crisis, we have corona, everything. So what's going on with the precious metals? Well, you know, I think that uh, there's a lot of pressure on, on silver just because of the manipulation that goes on. Uh, uh, you know, you got the big auto companies that are consuming a lot of silver. You got the solar panel companies uh, consuming a lot of silver. They, they, they keep the, the consumption, you know, very quiet. They, you know, it, it's it's uh, it's almost like they're paranoid to let anyone know actually what they're consuming. You know, you've got two industries between the, the solar panel industry and the electric car industry that are consuming almost 25% of the world supply of silver. Yeah. And that's crazy. And you don't see it in, in any headlines anywhere. You don't see anyone talking about yeah, it. True. Um, uh, it's extremely tight market. Production of silver is dropping and has been dropping for five consecutive years now. And no one knows about it. Mm -hmm. But you, you talk, you're talking about silver for a long time now. You're a big silver investor and um, you, you're calling for higher silver prices for, for very long now. So are we wrong about it? Because I do the same. I was always like, hey, we will see new highs. Um, I, I've said $100 in, in the near future. Mm -hmm. So will we ever see $100 on silver or never? You know, I've, I've the one that, I, you know, I created the phrase triple digit silver. Yeah. You know, a, a, about a decade ago. Uh, I was, when I put First Majestic together in 2012, um, uh, or pardon me, 2002, uh, 19 years ago, um, got my decades wrong. But um, you know, I did predict predict $50 silver at the time. Yeah. You know, silver was five bucks, and uh, I was right. Uh, I didn't expect silver to go from 50 to all the way back down to 13, mm. though. That surprised me. And uh, you know, we're we're at 25 today, approximately 24 today. It's not bad. You know, we're we're making decent money at, at current metal prices, but at an extremely manipulated metal. You know, you've got uh, silver trading in the paper markets of a billion ounces a, a day. Mm -hmm. uh, the miners produce 800 million a year. So you know, the leverage is just nuts. And and. Uh, uh, you know, eventually it's going to crack. You know, mm -hmm. I've been calling on the miners for the last, you know, couple of years now to, you know, let's price our metal in a different way. You know, let's stop relying on the paper markets and price our metal like uranium, you know, like diamonds, like oil. Yeah. You know, why, why do we have to follow the COMEX price of metal or, or, or paper metal to, to price our physical metal? It just mm -hmm. makes no sense. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's a true story. So what do you think? Is it right now the best contrarian investment you can make actually on the market to buy silver and silver stocks? Well, I feel like I've been a contrarian, <laughs> a contrarian for 30 years, quite yeah. honestly. You know, <laughs> I, I've been in the mining sector for, you know, over 30 years and, and uh, you know, I've been a bull on metals, you know, from, from you know, right from the beginning. Uh, you know, we need these metals as a human race sure. and, uh, you know, whether it's copper, you know, whether it's silver, uh, uranium, you know, these are all very important com commodities. And uh, my presentation I'm having tomorrow, I'm going to be talking about um, the, 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 the market cap of the top 50 miners compared to the market cap of the top five largest corporations on the planet. And it's quite shocking because, mm -hmm. you know, these, these five corporations, which may, are made up of the Apples, Microsoft, yeah. and so on, they wouldn't exist without the miners. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think for the, I think we see a commodity super cycle actually right now. You know, it's a big topic right now, ASG and um, sustainable energy, renewable energy. And for all this, for the Tesla, you need um, nickel, you need um, zinc, you need silver. Uh, and nobody invests into the silver companies or in the silver stocks, they invest in, in Tesla for example. Mm -hmm. Isn't it a better bet to invest directly in the commodity companies? You know, I think so, particularly at the stage we're at right now. Um, I look at this market very similar to what it was like in 1999, 2000. I remember that market quite well. And and I started investing in, in, in technology in the early 2000s. Yeah. You know, I put together First Quantum Minerals in the in the early 90s, a copper company. And I, I left that company in 2000 before I put the First Majestic together in 2002. So I kind of da dabbled around in the high tech sector a little bit. But, um, you know, the whole sector crashed, you know, obviously in a big ball of flame. Claims, you know, where when the Nasdaq dropped from you know eighty percent, you know the Nasdaq hit five thousand in March of two thousand, and three years later it was it was about fifteen hundred in, in that range. I think the same thing is going to happen again. I think the S and P, the Nasdaq, they're just you know ripe for 
uh, correction. correction yeah. And uh, this money, you know, it, it, it's, it's all flow of money. You know, it, um, you know, there's just so much money chasing Tesla, you know, chasing, you know, Microsoft and Apple and all the big companies and all the meme stocks and, you know, uh, whether it's Robin Hood or, or you name it, um, you know, uh, a name shows up on a headline and all of a sudden everyone's going after that mm. one stock. Um, you know, that type of market's going to end. You know, this is very similar to the dot-com bubble of 2000 and uh, when it cracks, it's going to be ugly. Uh, and, but all that money, in my opinion, is going to flow into the resource sector. I agree with you. I think we will see the biggest crash of all times because there's so much money and it's so much debt um, on margin as well. Of course, they, they speculate like never before. Mm -hmm. uh, but the central banks, they will, of course, try to keep the market safe. That's for sure. You know, we have mm -hmm. the Fed put um, and we, we see a very, very strong dollar, which is bad for commodities, actually. So wh mm -hmm. what's your take about a US dollar? Will we see a rising US dollar in the f near future or what do you think? You know, I, I can't see it happening. I just don't know. It just doesn't make logical sense to me. Uh, um, you know, as governments just print more and more money, and the U U.S. government's the worst. You know, they just you know, passed another you know multi-trillion dollar yeah. bill just uh, the last couple of days, and they look, it looks like they might even do another one in, in the next few months. Uh, so they're just printing you know scads of money, and you know eventually that's going to crack the whole system. You know, you never, never know when it's going to happen. You know, the G7 gets together on a stage and all talks about. You know, printing money and uh, um, you know modern monetary policy, and the and these governments of today think that they could just print unlimited amounts of, of currency um, with no repercussions. Well, it's never worked in human history. But this time, um, it's different. Um, apparently, <laughs> apparently, they think it is. So. Uh, uh, you know, we'll see. Does you know? Does the world turn into Zimbabwe? Uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah. You know, I, it's I just know. a matter of time. It's not a question mm -hmm. if; it's a question when it will burst. Uh, I, I think so too. Yeah, and yeah. It's it's staying power. And uh, you know, w when you're trading commodities, uh, you have to take advantage of the trading. You know, because there are volatile. Yeah. You know, before we got on air, I said uh, you know I'd sold all my uranium stocks, and uh, I'm bullish on uranium. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. um, you you know the, the the stocks went up so much in such a short period of time. You know, I want to take some money off the table and, and wait for the correction and I'll be back in the market when I when I see that correction occur which you know may never happen but if it does I'll be ready to take advantage of it and I think you have to do the same for all the commodities and all True. the mining stocks because they are volatile you know they come through starts and stops and uh, if you're smart enough and, and time your investments I think you can do quite well yeah yeah I was buying silver stocks and gold stocks uh, lately because I think it was a mm -hmm. contrarian bet and it was attractive for me mm -hmm. uranium I still hold I sold some of them but um, the most I hold because I, I run marathon on this one because mm. I think we will see a big comeback of, uh, of um, nuclear power in, in, in Europe as well. There's no choice. Yeah, there's no choice. Actually, if we mm. want to really want to achieve the Paris uh, Treaty um, mm. goals, then we have to get to nuclear power. There is no other choice. Governments are afraid to do it. I know, and uh, especially in uh, Germany, you know. Uh, absolutely. And, uh, we switch them off. I, I know, and they, well, Japan as well, of course. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, governments will just, you know, they're this 2030, 2050 deal, uh, you know, go, going all green by 2050. You, you're not going to be able to do it without yeah. nuclear. I always I wonder if people know who drive Tesla if there are that, that there are commodities into the, in, in the car if they know that that mm. you have to get lithium and, and nickel and cobalt to build these cars but it's it's something else okay so no I, I don't think so because it's the people that buy these cars that think that they're being green greenwashing yes, uh, yes yeah yes. and, and uh, they're in some cases anti mining mm. uh, but in fact without mining that car wouldn't exist exactly assist. exactly mm. and that's why I say don't buy Tesla buy actually the producers, the commodities, the miners, it's much more better, it's a better better um, leverage. Yeah, so and, and the miners can get better. You know, yeah. And, and, and uh, you know, you go back 100 years and sure there was a lot of poor practices in the mining sector. The technology wasn't there. You know, they're using a lot of, you know, techniques that, you know, were, were quite pollutive types of types of techniques. Today, the technology is there and, and the mining sector is starting to use some pretty interesting technologies. And, uh, you know, just in the case of uh, First Majestic Silver, for example, we've now converted our last mine from diesel over to LNG. And we're now looking at hydrogen. We're, wow. we're, we're just in, in early discussions with a company in Canada that's producing power through hydrogen uh, plants, cool. which is quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. I talked to another guy from a mining company. He told me that actually the commodity um, sector is the most regulated uh, sector in the world. You oh, know? for sure. From from the pit hole to the to the I don't know producer of, of gold coins. Mm -hmm. So um, he said th there is no better way to control the the, the mining sector, and they mm -hmm. already already do it. So. Yeah. That was interesting. And, and governments don't help us either because uh, 
the governments are paranoid to help a minor because yeah, you know, sure. that's it's bad. deemed to be a dirty business. Uh, so they'd rather help Levi's, uh, you know, open up a plant and have slave labor, you know, uh, mm -hmm. making making jeans in the middle of nowhere where there's no one watching versus, you know, helping a mine that creates, you know, long-term sustainable jobs that last 30 to 40 or 50 years. And so how's the situation in, in Canada? Because there's a big mining sector, but we have Trudeau, so... Yeah, and they're, you know, shutting down oil, you know, uh, production and they're not allowing the, the development of uh, pipelines, which is a complete disaster. So is it still safe to own stocks from Canada? Well, you know, it's it's safe. Come. <laughs> you know, at least the regulatory system is pretty good. Okay. Uh, you know, it's very transparent. And there's one good thing about the Canadian banking system. It's always been healthy, even during the financial crisis, that it, it was pretty immune to that. And if you're an investor in Canadian stocks, you know, you're, you know, the you know, financial statements, you know, regulatory environments, it's pretty strict. Yeah. And it's all very transparent. And professional, yes. And well. yeah, so, so. Um, let's talk about another country, Mexico. There was some topic in the late, in last couple of days. Uh, Fortuna uh, um, Silver mm -hmm. had some problems. You know what's going on there? Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. You know, they, this current government um, is is really anti foreign investment. It, it's not so much anti mining, um, but so much of the investment in Mexico is mining, obviously. And yeah. uh, I don't know the last count, but it's well over 300 foreign companies are active in the mining sector within Mexico. Uh, the oil and gas sector is much larger than mining. And uh, that's, you know, uh, that's impacting U.S. and Canadian companies quite negatively because there was a lot of investment in Mexico from the Canadians and the Americans in the last administration. And this current administration is ripping up contracts that, you know, uh, some of these oil companies had invested hundreds of millions of dollars in infrastructure in building out uh, infrastructure within Mexico. You know, you can't even... Uh, Shockingly enough, you know, Mexico is is uh, got a lot of natural gas, but they don't want to build pipelines to the cities from the fields to power, you know, the, the communities with natural gas. You know, they'd rather burn coal and and um, you know power, you know, use electricity that way, which is ridiculous. So, yeah. and then I just heard the other day that they actually want by twenty, I think it was twenty thirty, that they don't want to export oil any longer. They want to use the oil only for themselves. Okay. Mm -hmm. So who's in, in power in Mexico? Is it socialist? It's again? a very socialist okay, government. It's, yeah, everywhere. Though, though, it's, everywhere. It's, it's turning that way around yeah. the world, whether it's Canada, Build Latin better. America. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, they're all getting together, talking the same talk. So do you expect like um, mining taxes to rise globally? It's, it's hard to say. You know, um, taxes have, did go up in 2014. Yeah. Uh, in Mexico. Uh, there's really no talk about it, so hopefully it doesn't happen. Uh, there is talk in the United States, you know, we, yeah. we've seen some legislation um, uh, in, in the bill, this three point whatever trillion dollar bill that was proposed, there was a, uh, a tax on uh, federal land for exploitation of oil and gas and mining properties, but that portion of the bill was removed, thank goodness. Okay. Um, the state of Nevada has been talking about doing something as well in this in, in, in They all need money. Yeah, and then, you know, thank goodness for marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're, you know at, at, at least the governments are getting a little bit of extra money. Okay, so which um, mining jurisdictions are your favorite ones right now, if you would have to make a decision? Well, Canada would be right Still? up there. You know, with okay. First Mining Gold, you know, I'm the chairman sure. of that company, and I put that portfolio together back in 2015 because, you know, it's, it's just a very safe jurisdiction for miners. Okay. Um, Ontario. Quebec particularly and now Newfoundland you know with all the recent exploration activity going on there and uh, the Newfoundland government is pretty excited as you can imagine because this is an island that has only 40,000 people that live on it. okay you know there's more moose than there are people <laughs> apparently yeah. so for them to have a nice couple of big mines where is going to create a lot of uh, economic activity which is great for that province uh, but uh, you know states like Nevada, Arizona, the U.S., the United mm. States is mm. also that'd be my second okay. favorite. What about South America? Is there any country you would say? Mm, let's you know, it. you know, no? we've been we've been you know first majestic. You know, we we we're always looking for ways to grow our production, and silver is a tough metal to find. Um, and, and Peru, Argentina, they're known for some silver deposits, but we've just shied away from Peru and Argentina, and, mm. and now even Chile looks like it's going quite uh, uh, south as well. Yeah, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, have supply chains for you um, during the COVID crisis um, affected or your operations as as whole? You know, the equipment uh, when it comes to uh, 
you know, the big, big, big like filter presses, yeah. a lot of the European uh, manufactured equipment, mm -hmm. uh, Sandvik equipment, which is Rolling Fleet, uh, uh, Caterpillar engines, you know, the, the big stuff. Yeah, it, it, the lead times have probably, I'd say, gone up by 50 to 100 percent. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's inflation. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I think it's just people don't want to work. <laughs> okay. you, know, I, you know, I think governments are just paying so much money for people to stay at home that, that what's the motivation? True. You know, you've got, you know, ships sitting out in the harbors and no one to un unload these ships. It's, it's really shocking. The governments have to you know, stop financing, uh, you know, people to stay at home, unfortunately, but I don't think they will. So you're an entrepreneur. You still want to do business in this surrounding, in this Area, uh, I don't know. It's you know, crazy, isn't it? I, I enjoy what I do. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, but they make it really hard for one. You they know? do. They do. Politicians all over the world. You know, look mm. at Australia, look at New Zealand, look at Canada, look at Germany, everywhere. And mm. um, if you want to start something, you just get problems, actually. Yeah. And now this Corona thing. Well, you know, I, I'm. I tend to be an optimist. Sure. And, and uh, you know, I've I've been that way all my life, and uh, I know we're going through what they call the fourth turning. I'm not sure if you've seen. Uh, Howe's book, you know, called, called the uh, Fourth Turning, but um, sure. Or, uh, uh, but uh, actually, the title's not the Fourth Turning, but the it's Fourth Turning for Neil Howe. I, yeah. I wrote about it in this. Oh, book did you? Oh, okay, yeah. very good. Yeah, and I will do an interview with him as well. And, oh, very yeah, good. Yeah. yeah, he's a. We are in the yeah. Fourth Turning, definitely. That's right, and, and he's identified this. He identified this period back in the nineties, yeah. and and this period could last a decade. It could be two decades, and and it's going to be very lots of turmoil probably a market crash and there could be hopefully you know nothing worse than that but you know it could get pretty ugly and uh, it will. and then we've just got to get through this period it and cycles. Uh, yeah it's and always the but, same. but but the other side of that you know when we get into the first turning i guess it would be called yeah um, um uh, spring it, it's very optimistic yeah it's and, and golden and, age yeah. golden age or yeah. silver age who, who knows yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you expect after this fourth turning after this winter so winter is coming winter is here actually mm -hmm. you see it outside um you expect a new monetary system i do yeah what kind yeah. of monetary system you think we will have you know it's it's what you hope for i i, I <laughs> wouldn't you know what what i you know what they're pushing is the world currency yeah right um and then the g20 g7 you know you can tell right they're talking they've been talking about sdrs for now almost two decades yeah. and they're uh in you know the euro was obviously formed as kind of a part of that whole process you know, fall play. yeah and, and and there's been talk about merging you know uh, north america as well the economies there and and so on like nafta for example it was kind of this globalist uh, um, uh, agenda you know and and we're seeing that and uh, i think that's really what the globalists want to see um, they, they want to see a one world government with a one world currency uh, I hope they never get there. Um, you know, I hope that the fourth turning ends before that all comes to be, because um, uh, that's definitely the strategy. It sounds like 1984, like a totalitarian yeah, sure. dictatorship. Mm -hmm. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the words uh, they, you know they they make you know they create new words and uh, you know like like the uh, build back better for example. Exactly. You know where they they. They go into a back room and all, all the governments of the world come out with the same phrase with a matter of a couple of days. It's pretty shocking. But right now they're really successful, I think. You know, the are. whole world is, is turning in one direction and nobody mm -hmm. nobody realizes it. Because everybody is like, like, okay, that's the way now and we do it, we just yeah. obey. Yeah, well, everyone's on Facebook, everyone's on Twitter, and uh, the governments, you know, go after these, uh, you know, people. these people that are running these corporations and uh, get them into the mold. and. Uh, they, you know, it's, it's, uh, and of course the millennials, they're, they're, they've not experienced, you know, what we've experienced. Yeah, and, and so they just accept it as, as, as the way it should be, you know, they trust the governments and, uh, and so on. And, uh, you know, we, I think know a little bit more about the damage governments can do, unfortunately. So to summarize, actually it's getting worse before it gets better, mm -hmm. but right. let's get back to my question. What sure. kind of monetary system you want to see or you hope? Well, to well I would like expect? to see something based on real reality. Yeah. You know, something that's really based on supply and demand, you know, which, which hinders governments mm -hmm. from just printing, you know, uh, vast amounts of but money. But the that they politicians don't own. will never implement something like that. Well, that's, 
that's the problem, right? Because I think it's going to take a different group of politicians. I think that you know the the current. Are you available? <laughs> <laughs> well, they wouldn't pay, they couldn't pay me enough probably, but um, in silver, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I think you have to have a different mindset. I think that the current elite that that have been running the you know the governments for the last you know thirty years since we've been kids um, really need to be replaced by by sure. a new group. And we're seeing some interesting uh, politicians coming up. You know, we've got a couple of uh, politicians in Canada that are starting to speak the same uh, or, or the what I consider um, the, the proper language. Uh, we're seeing some politicians in the United States as well coming out coming out, and uh, just getting frustrated with the communism or the socialism, you know, lean that, that the current uh, leader was seeming to move. And a lot of it is based on climate change, you know, and, uh, you know, which is itself a completely, you know, unusual topic but uh, nevertheless um, you know they're going down this path and and some have even called the human the parasite and uh, you know the, the humans are somehow damaging our planet and uh, yet you know if, if uh, they would actually think a little bit more you know the humans are actually the solution to the planet exactly. and they're, they're not the parasite and, no, uh, no. Uh, but yet you know some of these elitist uh, agenda seems to want to uh, pollute the brains of our young children to to, f to tend to make them think that somehow the human being is the the uh, you know the, the the parasite yeah we we in the end game actually we see just like um, the roman empire everything will collapse mm. and you think the corona crisis and the climate change are just instruments tools for the politicians to create their own view or their new world order oh absolutely okay yeah yeah Okay, that's a good statement, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. So um, something else, um, a lot of customers of mine in, in my um, company ask me whether mining is sustainable. You know, mining is mining ESG compatible. Compatible. Um, have you considered to use um, electric underground mining vehicles? You already said you, you, you switch to, to gas and to LNG and perhaps to hydrogen. So because it's a big topic, ESG right now, you know, mm -hmm. in the investing area as well. Well, you know, mining's been around since humans been around. Sure. Um, you know, uh, even in caveman, you know, uh, you know, they had to mine to, to create instruments to, to for, you know, for hunting. So, you know, there and then he's, he's evolved over time to where it is today. So mining can't end. You know, they're they're talking about mining on Mars or mining on the Moon or mining on asteroids. You know, these are all fantasies yeah. that uh, you know will likely never happen. You know, uh, and if they do, it'll be hundreds, if not thousands, of years into the future. So, um, you know, it's a fact of life that miners have to get better. And, and uh, what miners don't do is they don't sell themselves, you know, and, and uh, because I think uh, for, for a large part, because miners have been under attack for so many decades that they're afraid to really point at all the good things that they're doing. But, um, you know, the schools that we create, the education that we create, the, um, the, the, just the infrastructure that we build, the roads, the, the, the water infrastructure, electrical infrastructure, you know, we, we do as an industry so much to build communities. And, and uh, the mining sector gets very little credit for it, if not no credit at all. Um, you know, years ago when, when uh, the first big rally happened, uh, well, you know, when gold went to, you know, 1800 bucks back in 2011, you know, I was saying at the time that, you know, my view was that the, the miners would become the banks of the future. Uh, because, you know, I didn't predict that you know, there would be such a big correction. I assumed at that point that gold was going to continue moving higher as, and taking silver and the other metals with it. But we had the major correction which started in 2011 and uh, it's just now uh, turned around back, you know, back in 2018, I guess. Um, uh, but now I think that the um, high-tech companies are going to end up owning the mining companies. Yeah. Uh, because the high-tech companies are just becoming so big yeah. and, and so influential. And they need these metals. And uh, if, if you're Apple that owns a silver mine in Mexico, you know, you've, got, you, you've got a ton of power. Yeah, right? exactly. I, I have one chart in my book, actually. It shows the um, market cap of Apple. It's like 2.3 or 4 billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Trillion. It's trillion. Trillion. trillion yeah. Sorry, yeah. trillion dollars. And I co uh, showed all the mining companies gold and silver. It's like 600 billion. So mm -hmm. actually, Apple could buy them with the yeah. uh, cash they have. And they would be the monopolist. So sure. it would be so easy actually mm -hmm. for them and gold and silver they always need for their products as well. And the governments couldn't attack them either. No, no because way. Because they'd be too big. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, something's wrong with this whole system. So um, I just read that you're holding back silver lately. So mm -hmm. is this true? And why? What's the, the game plan? 
Well, it goes back to my you know trading career. You know, back back in the '80s when I first uh, entered the financial uh, uh, industry, I worked for the banks uh, um, uh, as a trading you know in, in the in the trading department. So I, I I just have this trading blood. Okay. You know, and, and been, blood. <laughs> I, I've been that way for yeah. forever. You know, forever. And you know when I see these anomalies that occur, because silver is very volatile. And uh, it's very frustrating. And you, you know, we, we saw silver, you know, double in price, basically. Well, not quite, but it went from eighteen to thirty dollars back at the beginning of this year. You know, due to the Reddit crowd and and, and so on. And then, and then it corrected quite strongly down to, you know, the, the low twenties. And uh, I just decided that I was frustrated. And I said, I'm not going to sell anymore. I'm mm -hmm. not going to add to the supply of metal and then let these banks, you know, continue with these crooked, you know, games that they constantly seem to play in, in this marketplace. You know, because they can just put a lid on the market and print unlimited amount of paper that sure. they want. And, yeah. and, uh, and, and you and you and I can't do that. But, but the, the banks that trade these markets are exempt. Uh, in, in, and so they could do whatever they wish. So they put a lid on, 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 on the silver price and then of course they drive it down after that. So I, I took our metal off the market and um, you know it's turned out to be a good thing. You know the, 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 uh, it's the third time I've done it. You know it, we don't do it on a regular basis. Yeah. Uh, you know First Majestic's now 19 years old. I think it's only about the third time I've done it. Uh, it's the largest one. Uh, How one, much one. do you have in stock now? Uh, I've, we've been we've been selling. Uh, okay. Oh yeah. No, we uh, go on this nice rally. You know, through twenty four fifty, then through twenty five, and uh, so we were down to about uh, half that position now. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. So it worked out well for shareholders. You know, it's it's uh, you know, it, you know, some investors would say just hold it forever. Mm. You know, and, and not not sell it at all. But you know, we are running a business. You know, okay. we you know, and at the end of the day, the institutions and the investors that own us want to see the revenue. They want to see the profits. And you know, to hold back one and a half million ounces of silver, it's about thirty-five million in revenue. It's a lot of money just sitting on the balance sheet. Definitely, definitely. I just read that um, Eric Sprott's uh, investment company sold some shares of First Majestic. Do you know why mm -hmm. or? You know, he's been, I'm not sure if you noticed the big investment he put into uh, the, one of the companies in, in Newfoundland. Oh, uh, no. I think it's called uh, uh, Newfoundland Gold. Yeah. yeah. He just did a big investment in that. I think he was just raising capital. Okay. I, I talked to his, uh, 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 the guy that does most of his trading for him uh, just last week, and uh, they, he told me on the phone that he has no intention of selling anymore. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, he also diversified to Nevada some investments to the mm. U.S. Okay. Yeah. yeah I'm, okay. Not, I'm not aware. So, um, would you rather buy silver or your own shares? I know <laughs> the answer, but I have to ask. <laughs> well, you know, me buying my own shares, you know, you I do. I know. I saw I, that. I, I know, but I can never sell them. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I can only do it with money that you know is sitting on the side because uh, if I tried to sell my own shares, and investors would go, "Well, you know, Keith is out there, you know, promoting." Uh, you know his company. Why would he be selling at the same time? Yeah. I, I don't want to ever be put in that position because I'm a bull. I I, I think that silver is going to triple digits, and you know that if if that in fact is true, or does in fact happen, you know the stock will just go crazy, yeah. and uh, um, who who knows what number it would be? But it would be some number substantially higher than where it is today. But silver is more of a liquid, you know, metal. Um, not that I would go to the store and try to sell it, but um, uh, nevertheless, I look as the Two investments quite different. You know, for me, I, I make most of my money uh, trading other companies, you know, okay. because I'm so connected to the mining sector that I, you know, anything I enjoy or like or, or management teams is generally what I focus on. And, uh, you know, I'll make investments in a variety of different companies and mm. trade those stocks. Okay. So um, we talked about the silver squeeze um, early this year. Mm -hmm. You thought it was a good thing with Reddit and everything, or was it just. I thought it was great, you know, because, you know, if you go to these conferences, um, you know, quite often it's the same people. Right? And, and uh, I've been on the road for over 30 years, as I said, and, uh, you know, you keep running into the same people all the time. It doesn't matter whether you're in New York or, or, like Mi a or, or Miami or San Francisco yeah. or London or, or Zurich or Frankfurt. Munich, Munich, Frankfurt here. You know, it's the same faces. So, so for a whole bunch of brand new investors to come into this market and wake up to the supply and demand fundamentals of silver, I thought was a fantastic thing. And uh, um, our sales of our website are at historic levels. Um, we, we were probably selling, I would say, 300%, or actually even more than that. It could be 500% more silver over our website this year than we did last year. Wow. So um, what's your goal for silver in 2022? 
You know, uh, I've been predicting I know. The prices for a long time, and uh, so you, you know, for the last expert. <laughs> yeah, for the last five years, I have been particularly right. But um, you know, th this run to twenty five was pretty exciting. I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't expecting to see a major run on metals until next year. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that, uh, in my opinion, and I could be completely wrong, but I think we're going to see a stock market crash uh, sometime in the next couple of quarters. Yeah. And I think that's going to be the beginning of the next big run on, in commodities, mm. uh, similar to what we saw in 2001, 2002. So, you know, that is probably going to mean, in my opinion, uh, 3,000 on gold. And uh, um, I think we're going to see ratio collapse in gold and silver because I do think silver is going to outperform. Yeah. I think the silver story will uh, finally hit the newspapers. And uh, when silver shows up in headlines in Wall Street or, or, or Bay Street or over here and in Europe, then I think that's going to bring a whole new group of uh, investors and a, and a lot of new money into this very, very tiny market. You know, the silver market is only, you know, talk, you know 1.3 trillion. Yeah, that's no, it. it's not much less because um, you, you've got 800 uh, million ounces of silver being produced annually by the miners. Yeah. So multiply that by $25 an ounce. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, you know, nothing. it's like over 20, just a little over $20 billion. Mm -hmm. dollars. And, uh, you know, that, you know, you throw a couple of billion dollars at that, yeah, the stock or pardon me, the price of silver will probably double. Okay, so you will see rising prices in 2022. What about uh, the decade? What do you think end of the decade? Where will the price be? Will it be three digits or? I think it's going to be triple digits within okay. three to five years. Okay, okay, that's 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 very yeah. optimistic. Yeah. Yeah. And I, gold? Well, I, I think it's going to be driven by by demand. I think yeah. that eventually, you know, you look at the other commodities. You know, look, you know, even even you know. Oh, there's just so many. All the, you know, copper. It's 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 gone up double. It's uh, you know, oil has gone up four four times. Um, all these different commodities except silver. And you I mean, you and mentioned gold, it right yeah. at, right at the beginning of the yeah. interview. You know, um, and eventually that's going to change. I think silver will become a darling, uh, and and uh, you don't know when it's going to happen. But when it does, it's just going to go like fire. I think it's going to move probably you know it, it'll be moving five dollars a day like the past in the past the, the silver bull markets were always the strongest mm -hmm. compared to to gold or, or shares even yeah. so um, hopefully it lasts yeah yeah definitely definitely and yeah. um, what do you think about inflation is inflation transitory do you think we will see lower interest um inflation inflation last next year or you think it will uh, stay like this like five six seven percent yeah it's a tough one right because You, you would think the economy is rolling over. Um, uh, it's just, you, you, you know, you look at the stats that are coming out from, from the global economy, but um, I just think there's just so much money around mm -hmm. that, that um, you know, the, and, and, and the wealthier are getting wealthier and, and, they're pay and they don't care what price they're paying for anything. You know, you know, you see the used car market, you see the, you know, the new car market, you see the real estate market. You know, it doesn't seem to matter what anything costs anymore because there's just so much cash around that people are willing to... It's for free. Yeah, and, and, and interest rates are so low. Yeah. So, um, and, I, and, and if interest rates go higher, then it's going to crash the whole system. So, you know, the, the governments are forced to keep rates low. So I think that's really what you have to watch for. I think as long as rates are low, you're going to have this continued inflation. Mm -hmm. um, and that ultimately could be what cracks the system. You know, I don't know what could be. Biden said yesterday he want to raise loans to $45 an hour. Mm. So then we would have definitely inflation. But the bond market says actually deflation. Mm -hmm. So this would be really interesting in the, in the near future. That's the big battle. Because yeah. right? you know, uh, we're in unprecedented times. So, definitely. So the, you know, the, all, times. All, all these economists that are used to old models and so on and so forth, they keep predicting, you know, certain things but you know you they, they all have very viable arguments on both sides of the the equation but uh, you know here we are as investors trying to you know make our way through it all and then you know try to make money at the end of the day that's what you know we're, we're you know that's interviews all about and, and i'm sure your book as well and, yeah. and uh but you know from for my money um you have to be in the in the metal sector yeah. you know it's gold silver and, and commodities all around Definitely, it's it's a perfect protection for your purchasing power and against the stupidity of politicians. Mm -hmm. And we are F definitely need some some um, yeah um, money on the front on the on the sideline to protect our purchasing power. So you have a German um, family name. Mm -hmm. By the way, you speak any German? Very very little. It's it's one of the languages I want to learn. Uh, okay. And and uh, if I if I could 
you know, I probably will never retire, but uh, when my schedule gets a little bit lower or less, um, it's a language I want to learn. But you have German German uh, roots, or yeah, I'm Canadian. You know I, yeah, yeah, I, I know but, that. But, but, but third third generation, so so my father's parents uh, came from Germany. You know where uh, about yeah, southern uh, the Munich area? Ah, mm -hmm. Bavarian. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Good, mm -hmm. good, good. It's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, last questions, like a rapid fire questions. Um, give us an elevator pitch about um, First Mining, your other company. Why mm -hmm. should people buy First Mining Gold? And I think it's dirty cheap. So, but yeah, well, I put that company together in 2015 because um, um, you know when I put I, I put three companies primarily together. First Quantum. Back in the early 90s, first Majestic in the early 2000s, and then first mining. And uh, in each case, I took advantage of a, a very unusual market. Um, and, and each time, the markets were completely washed out, they were very much hated, and prices were extremely low. So back in 2014, 2015, as you probably remember, you know, you could buy a, a, a gold stock for less than $10 an ounce in the ground. So, you know, you had. Uh, these these mining companies or exploration companies that had a million ounces of gold that they spent you know twenty thirty million dollars developing over a ten year period that were trading at five to ten million dollars uh, uh, um, total market cap, which I'd never seen before, and so I figured I was so I had to put this company together, so I, I I raised enough capital and I ended up buying eight companies over a period of fifteen months mm -hmm. and. Uh, called it First Mining Finance with the idea of, of, of somehow monetizing this portfolio over the, the next you know, several years. We ended up um, changing the business plan slightly and decided to advance the projects instead of just uh, selling them all off. Um, so we changed the company to First Mining Gold and then uh, started drilling some of the projects. We, um, over time, we started then doing some JVs with some other partners, okay. and and, uh, and we started uh, um, getting share positions in the JV partners. Mm -hmm. So today, you've got this company uh, uh, with a market cap of about 200 million that has you know over 30 million in cash, over uh, has over 30 million in marketable securities, has um, uh, the largest undeveloped gold project, the Spring Pole Gold Project, in its portfolio, but it's stuck in that kind of boring period, right? Uh, and if you, I'm not sure if your listeners know about Lassonde, but you know, Pierre Lassonde, you know, a famous mining uh, entrepreneur, but he created what is known as the Lassonde curve. And, uh, um, you know, during the exploration phase, you know, stocks generally do quite well. And then during the development or permitting phase, that's when stocks do quite poorly, you know, because that's an uncertain period. Yeah. It can take, you know, years in some cases. Um, and then the outcome sometimes is not, you know, completely 100% sure. So investors tend to shy away from companies that are in that period. And then you get into the uh, uh, construction period where the stocks start to improve again. And then you get into the production or the, you know, the production period where, where you know, things are you know, quite usually looking pretty good. Um, so first mining stuck in that development permitting stage and it's been there for a couple of years. So the stock when I took it public had a $600 million market cap back in 2015 because the market was quite excited about this portfolio I put mm -hmm. together. You know, we had 11 million ounces of gold um, um, spread over you know, eight projects, all in Canada, you know, very good jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and and, uh, and then today, you know, now that it's in the permitting phase, it's got, you know, a third of the price, 200 million, but it's well financed. It's a nice discount. Do doesn't need to raise a penny. Yeah. It can it can spend the next two years in the permitting stage on spring pole and, and, uh, and not have to dilute a single share. Mm -hmm. So it's in a very good position, but it, the market's just ignoring it just because it's in this permitting development stage. Mm -hmm. I bought some stock last week. Uh, because I just think it's so dirt cheap at yeah. 30, 30 cents a share, yeah. 32 cents a share. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it is. It is definitely yeah. is. It's another um, exciting project or share you have a look at? Or you a company that I just helped take public is a company called Snowline Gold. Okay. Um, it's been doing okay. Um, it came public at about 60 cents. It, it went down to about 30 cents. It's now trading in the mid 60s. Uh, they've got one of the largest uh, land holdings in the Yukon. Uh, and, and they've been drilling. Um, uh, have, I'm still waiting for results, but it's uh, important, yeah. but there's been some results coming out, trickling out, and they all look pretty good. Um, I, I stay in touch with the company, but uh, uh, interestingly enough, I think they did 22 holes or 21 holes, and every hole hit gold. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is pretty unusual. You it's, don't normally see that. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's interesting. Okay, yeah. so at what prices would you sell gold and silver, like when? 
Well, I trade the market. Yeah, no, but if, yeah. if, is there, if you said you, you sold all your uranium shares because it went too quick, too high. Mm -hmm. so, so imagine there would be a blast like um, gold hits 5,000 or something like that. Is there a, a, a number where you would sell everything? You know, I don't think of the market like that. You know, I, I just think of what I make. Um, okay. You know, when, when I make an investment, you know, I buy stocks generally. And because, you know, there's, there's silver and gold I buy, the physical metal. I never think I'm going to sell it. Okay. You know, that's, you know, going to go to my kids. For and, your retirement. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and that's never going to be sold, mm -hmm. at least as far as I'm concerned. Um, but the stocks I, I buy, you know, if, so, I, if, I, if I buy a stock at 50 cents, you know, I look at it, I look at the management team. I, I, I make a judgment call right when I buy it. I'll decide on how much I want to buy. What's my exposure? Do I want to buy, you know, 25,000 shares or do I want to buy 250,000 shares? Or in some cases, do I actually want to buy a million shares, you know, if I'm really excited about it? Uh, and, and, and then I'll say, okay, I, I want to make 100% on this investment because I'm, I, I, I'm buying it just for a quick trade. You know, I think there's a catalyst that's coming, um, uh, some event, you know, and, and, and I'm just going to take advantage of it. And when it hits 100%, I'm out. If it goes to two or 300%, I don't care. I've made my 100% and I'm happy. In some cases, a longer term investments where I know the management team and I know what they're trying to accomplish, I, I may say, okay, I'm going to start liquidating part of my holdings at 300%. And uh, I'll, I'll get rid of maybe 10 or 15% at 300%. You know, it goes 350. I'll do another, you know, okay, 10 sure. or 15. Yeah. I'll scale it up. Sure. You know, and, and by the time at 500%, I'm usually out. Um, uh, you know, you got, that's my trading blood. And that's a good, uh, that's it's, good. Ju it's just the way I am. It's, ca it's kept me safe uh, throughout the 30 years of, of uh, been, me being doing this. And uh, yeah, I, I don't wait for those thousand, you know, uh, percent gains. Okay. I, have I have got them. Uh, but the reason why is because it happens so quickly mm. and I, I don't have time to sell it as yeah. quickly as the stock moves. Mm. Those are rare events. Um, they're nice when they happen, but uh, normally you have to manage a position. You know, it, it's, uh, um, I'll, I'll, you know, if you start selling a position with a three or four or five hundred percent gain, you, they usually correct, you know, before you can get off all your position. And you, uh, in my case anyways, uh, and I'm not recommending how people should invest, but I will likely go back in and, and rebuy, you know, a position and then trade it out again, you know, over time. That's yeah, an interesting strategy, definitely. So last question, what do you think about digital gold? We already talked about it <laughs> last time and um, I told you you should buy some. It went up further. So what about Bitcoin? You bought some or you still say nah you know it was in switzerland actually um i forget what year it was it could have been uh 2015 or 2016 or something like that and uh, i listened to a fellow uh, and i forget his name american fellow who's doing a presentation and i said wow did i gotta buy this mm -hmm. and bitcoin was 250 dollars at the time and you didn't buy of course. and and i spent <laughs> i was with my okay. v vp of corporate development at the time and him and i spent the next three or four days trying to figure out how to buy this Bitcoin and we couldn't like for the life of us figure out how to buy it right <laughs> okay and uh, you know we, we should have probably spent more time we should have probably made some calls and yeah. educated ourselves a little bit more which we didn't do and and then you know when I saw it go up the way it did you know I lost interest because I felt like I kind of missed out mm. and and uh, you know when it went up and then corrected back down to 3,000 and stayed there for about two years before this recent rally I, I was actually very seriously considering buying some but I just never did why you no know time. I guess I'm so focused on you know what I do sure. and it's just uh, it's you know always stepping out of your comfort zone is always you know a little bit challenging and it was definitely stepping out of my comfort zone because, I think uh, I think you could still buy it it will go to six digits I guess yeah and then it yeah. will correct but then you should definitely buy it as a contrarian investor yeah yeah. Keith, I have to say thank you for your time. Cheers. Was, like always, a pleasure. Hope next time I can drink a beer as well. That would be nice. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, good seeing you again, Mark. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Keith was always always great talking to you. So, guys, this was the interview with Keith Neumeyer from First Majestic Silver. Um, give a thumbs up, um, share the video widely, and um, check out um, his website. And, of course, on Twitter, you are also available. I will put your handle mm -hmm. in the description. Great. And thank you very much for your time. Take care. Bye. Okay. You too. Thanks.